So it's time to install kitchen cabinets and when it came to the cabinets themselves, we had three options. One option was to build the cabinets from scratch, which we've done before and we've got plans for carcasses and all that stuff, so you can go check those out. Um, however, that was gonna be a time consuming process and we've got a ton of other projects going on in this house, so we needed to make sure that we had time for those other projects. Now option two was to order custom cabinets and at this stage of the process, ordering custom cabinets would have put us out at least another month before they got in and then we've got to have countertops and all that stuff. So that was kind of out of the question as well as the price point is probably about as much as you're going to pay for cabinets. So we settled for a in between those two options, which is a RTA or ready to assemble cabinet. Now we found a color and profile that we liked a lot from Lene cabinets. And they, they have a rift white oak with a slim shaker profile. I thought it was kind of unique and it looks really nice. I think it'll go good in this house. As you can see, we've got a bunch of cabinets behind me. So let's get started building some cabinets. Now when it comes to the assembly of these cabinets, the thing that I like is that they're made out of plywood, which is great. And then the face frames are solid wood. Um, we're going to start by applying a bead of DAPS Weldwood Premium or Professional Wood Glue into the dado on the face frame. And then we're going to come back and install the side panels. All right, so I believe the side panels get put into place into this dado right here. And then we've got some clips that kind of hold those in place. Now we're just going to simply slide the top and bottom piece into this groove. sure that's all the way seated and then the back panel fits right and the back panel actually comes with some pre-drilled holes for some screws now I believe we need a couple clips on the top and the bottom Okay, now the hinges go on with one screw uh, and they've got a pre-drilled screw hole. So we just gotta get this screw gun in here. And the door face. Last but not least is the little dots. And you've got a nice looking little upper cabinet. Slow close hinges. Okay, so we've got all of our kitchen cabinets assembled and ready to be installed. Now the first thing we're gonna do is use our laser level and we're going to use this initial line just as a reference line and that is gonna be able to tell us where the highest point in the floor is because we know this floor is not level. This house was built in the 30s and I can guarantee you it's not level. So we're gonna go first around the room and we're just gonna measure from the floor up to our reference line for instance, here is 37 and 3 eighths. So we'll just go ahead and mark that and write it on the wall. 
37 and 3 eighths. And we'll go all the way around the room and take different measurements and find out which one is the lowest number. And that will give us our reference line for where our cabinets need to be at. Now the cabinet carcasses themselves are 30, 34 and a half. So we know that we'll need 34 and a half on our highest point and we'll use that line and mark a level line all the way around the room. That way we can base our cabinet height off of that. Okay, so I determined that this corner is the highest spot of the floor in the room and it's high by quite a bit um, compared to that side of the kitchen. Now luckily we've got the fridge and then there's a pantry cabinet there so we'll kind of deal with that when we get there. But what I was able to do was I was able to measure up from the highest point 34 and a half inches which is the height of my carcass and then I marked a line on the wall. I went ahead and set my laser to that height and now I'm going to go back with a chalk line and put a line on both of these walls to make sure that we don't have to use the laser and if that gets moved or whatever we have a line against the wall that we can reference off of that we need to get those cabinets to the correct height. Okay so I know I'm going to start back in this corner which I could technically start anywhere I wanted but I'm going to start back in here uh, because this is a blind corner cabinet so I need to get this set. It's not going to go tight against this back wall. It's going to be based on the center of the sink cabinet or the center of the sink cabinet needs to line up with the center of the window. So I went ahead and I marked the center of the window up here and I transferred that mark down to my reference line and then I went ahead and measured over for the edge of the cabinet. Now the sink cabinet is 36 inches but the issue is is that that is the face frame of the cabinet. Now each side of the cabinet gets set back a quarter inch from the edge of the face frame so I need to make a mark of that so I'm going to be using the back of the cabinet which is a half inch less, two quarters of an inch added together or subtracted from the full width. So I've got a 35 inch wide back of the cabinet and what I did was I measured 18 would be half of 36 so that would be the edge of the face frame. Now if I add a quarter of an inch then I'm going to have the edge of this blind corner. So I do 18 and a quarter and then I just take my tape measure and then mark a line right there. So I've got the edge of where this blind corner cabinet needs to go and then when I put my sink cabinet in here everything will be in the right spot. Okay, so I've got some plumbing in the back wall. Now this, these water lines have to come through the back of this cabinet over to the sink. So I need to cut some holes or drill some holes in the side of this cabinet to be able to get those through. I've gone ahead and marked the first one which is sticking the furthest out and we'll drill that. I'll start by drilling it until this pilot bit comes out the other side and then I'll finish the drill, the hole from the other side. Okay, so I've gone ahead, I know I'm level because the back of my cabinet I was able to shim up this side to get it flush with that level line that I've marked on the back wall. I also leveled it front to back and I went ahead and put these shims in here because there was a gap in the back of the cabinet and now I'm going to secure this to the studs in the wall. Now I'm going to be using the two inch wafer head construction screws from Simpson Strong Tie and I really like these because they've got a nice big flat wafer um, on the head that is going to be able, it's not going to countersink into the cabinet, it's going to give you the strength that you need to hold these cabinets against the wall. Now the good thing about this wall is since this was a wood framed wall we did put blocking in there for the base cabinets and the top and the bottom of the upper cabinets. Now this wall was the InsoFast foam panel so we're working with the plastic studs there, not the blocking. But this one basically I can screw anywhere I don't have to find a stud which is nice. So 
So when it comes to mounting the upper cabinets, um, which I, some people do them before they do the base cabinets. However, we had kind of needed to work our way out of this corner and leave our space for our oven. And then I wanted to make sure that everything was kind of where it needed to go in reference to this opening for the range. Now, one thing you will need is a plumb line. We use a laser level for that to get nice and plumb because I would say never trust the wall itself. Um, also, you'll reference off of your earlier level line and come up usually about 18 inches is what it is from the countertops. So give yourself a little extra cushion for the thickness of your countertops and then 18 inches between the lower and the upper cabinets. So once we've got that level and plumb line, we can go ahead and mount that cabinet to the wall with those cabinet screws. And again, I've got blocking behind this wall. Otherwise you'll need to locate your studs and screw into those. I like to go ahead and pre start the screws in the back of the cabinet. That way, when you get it up there, you just can finish them into the wall and uh, without having to fiddle around with all the screws and whatnot. So let's hang a cabinet. We got all the wall cabinets installed and we've gone ahead and put in some temporary countertops and got some appliances in place so we could start to kind of use this space. But one last thing that we had to do was install a uh, the island. Now we've got two cabinets in the island, a set of drawers and a trash can cabinet. And if you guys know me, I've partnered with Craig over the years. And one thing that I love about Craig Tool Company is they constantly come out with new jigs and tools. While I was in the middle of this process, they came out with a face frame cabinet hard or cabinet jig. This is going to be what we use to attach the cabinets face frame or the face frame of the cabinets together and make sure that those joints are nice and tight. So I'm happy to be able to try this out today on this last set of cabinets and see how it works. Now, obviously the first thing that we're going to have to do is pull all of these drawers out, which they simply just slide out of place because the screws are gonna go through just like the rest of them, they're gonna go through the inside. So this face of this jig is what supports or levels up the face of the cabinets together. <clears throat> Now, when you're attaching these, you kind of want to think about your screw placement because you can see those screws or at least the holes from them. So luckily we've got drawers all the way around, but if you had a cabinet door here, you'd want to attach from the other side where it's less noticeable. Now I will say that these things are made very well. The other nice thing is that all of these surfaces that are going to be in contact with the cabinet itself are padded and it just seems to be very well built. So essentially all we need to do now is drill our pilot hole. And then we take our trim head screw and slide this little jig out of the way. that in place. Now when it comes to the cabinet hardware, we went with some more modern pulls and they're very sleek. 
yet have that modern look to it, which I think goes really well with the overall style of the cabinet. Now, settling on these pools took a little bit longer than I thought, but we got there. However, as I was about to install these, I realized that the screws that come with them and just the handle itself is very thin, meaning there's not that much thread to get onto. So I had to go to the hardware store and make sure that I had the appropriate screws to be able to mount these. Now, as far as mounting the cabinet hardware, you can do it the old fashioned way and lay it all out there. However, Craig has come up with a new version of their cabinet hardware jig. This is the pro version of that. And the thing that I love about it is not only it'll, it'll go from an inch and three quarter inch pulls to all the way up to 12 inch pulls, which is perfect because we do actually have some 12 inch pulls that we have to mount. So being able to not only use a longer pull and mount that consistently with a jig like this is great. But the other thing is that this tool is obviously very easy to read that figuring out your layout and getting it all dialed in is pretty easy to do. But the other thing that I like is it has this little reference on the bottom of it. So you can simply put this jig in here, set this reference on the bottom and on the side, and then you know that your cabinet pull is always going to be in the same location for each cabinet door. So we'll go ahead and start drilling these holes out. And I've got a 3 16 inch bit. Make sure that's nice and snug. Now the other cool thing that I like is that not only can you set this jig up this way, but it's reversible. So you can just flip it around and do the other side of the cabinet the exact same way. So when it comes to the drawers or any cabinet face for that matter, but for the drawers, so I've got six and a quarter inches tall is what it is. So I'll set this to half of that, which would be three and an eighth. And then my pulls are 160 millimeters. So we'll divide that by two to get 80, 80 on each side should give us 160 and then we'll just check it to make sure everything looks good there and uh, what I've done already is I measured the width of the drawer face so we've got totals 14 and a half and half of that's gonna be seven and a quarter so I should I went ahead and marked that I lined my jig up with that mark and I should be right in the middle of that drawer face. <laughs> and I'll find my cabinet screws and get these mounted. All right, we got the hardware installed and I love the way everything turned out that from the cabinets to the handles, the appliances, everything is really coming together. Now there's a few things that we still have to do, which includes the countertops as well as a hood over top of the stove. And there's going to be tons of videos coming out around not only this kitchen, but this entire house. So if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you won't miss out on those future videos until next time. Be safe and happy building.